Hello, I am Dr. K. S. Badrinayan, the principal of MS Engineering College. Today, I invite you for a discussion on game theory. Here, I am going to discuss about the two-person zero-sum game, in which there will be two players, person A and the person B, or it can also be a team A, team B. It may be a cricket match or it may be a business plan, whatever it is. So, we are going to consider between the two persons or the two teams. When we consider the two persons, now let's say A plays different strategies. What are the strategies that he can play? He can play strategy A1, A2, A3. Similarly, B can play strategy B1, B2, B3. When A plays one of the strategies, let's say A1, and he knows well in advance and he is definite about playing only A1 throughout his game, then we say that he has got a pure strategy that means he will play only a1. Similarly, b also has got a choice to play either b1, b2 or b3. When he knows that he is going to play only the b2 strategy, then we say that he is going to, he is going to play only the pure strategy. In some cases where a does not know whether he is going to play either a strategy A1 or A2. Then he may play, now for example, let's say around 40% of the time he plays A1, 60% of the time he may play A2. So in that case, we say that A is playing mixed strategies. Now if you look at this matrix, we have got the payoff matrix. That means when A is playing A1, B is playing B1, the payoffs for A is 2 rupees or 2 units of you know any anything whatever we take so similarly when a is playing a1 b is playing b2 the payoff is 3 rupees now if you look at the problem from the perspective of only a when a is playing a1 and b is playing b1 the payoff is 2 that means a is going to gain 2 rupees and the b is going to lose 2 rupees so in total if you take the arithmetic of it that is the gain of A is the loss of B. So that is algebraic sum of both if you take, it is 2 plus minus 2 is equal to 0. Therefore, we say that it is a two person zero sum game. We also discuss about the saddle point and the value of the game. Now let's look at what is a saddle point is all about. We'll consider a problem in which a has got four strategies and B has got five strategies. So in which A is going to play the strategies A1, A2, A3, A4 such that he tries to play uh, the minimum payoffs he is going to get and he lets identify what is the minimum payoff that he is going to get if he is playing A1 strategy. Now that is uh, if you look at it, it's out of 9, 3, 1, 8, 0, it's the minimum is 0, corresponding to B playing strategy of B5. Therefore, the minimum that you are going to have is uh, 0. Now, similarly, for A playing A2 strategy, the minimum is 4. A playing A3 strategy, minimum or the row minimum there, we have 2. <coughs> similarly, A playing A4, we have the minimum 1. So when he has got the minimum payoffs, A will always definitely play a strategy which is going to maximize his minimum payoffs. So if you take the maximum of minimum payoffs, it is 4. Among 0, 4, 2, 1, it is 4. So that is 4. Now let's see B when he is playing B1 strategy, what is the loss, maximum loss that he is going to incur is 9. What is the maximum loss he is going to incur when he is playing B2 strategy? It is 6. Similarly, 4, 8 and 8. That is the maximum losses. So therefore, now he will not play the games having the maximum losses, but he will play the game having the minimum losses. So therefore, he will try to choose minimum of the maximums. So that is minimum of the maximums is 4. So min of max is equal to 4. Now, if you find out from this example, we have maximin is equal to min max is equal to 4. 
Now that is common, that is both of them are same. So we say that saddle point is located at the second row and the third column and the value of the game is 4. That means A will play A2 strategy, A will play A2 strategy, B will play B3 strategy and the payoffs that are going to be there is 4. That means A will get a payoff of 4 rupees and B will lose 4 rupees. That means 4 minus 4 plus minus 4 is nothing but 0. So this problem is getting determined because we have the saddle point. The saddle point determines what strategies A will play and what strategies B will play here and also determines what are the maximum payoffs that A can have. Right? So this is what we do with the maximum min or min max principle. Suppose if the game does not have a saddle point, what we do? That means there are no few strategies which the players can play. So then we have to play the mixed strategies. Now let's try to identify this problem where A is playing with head dot tail, B is playing with the head dot tail strategies. So in this case, in this case, we see that maxi min, that means when is A is playing with the head strategy, minimum value that you can get is minus 1, minimum of the second row is minus 1. So max of minimum is equal to minus 1. So when B is playing H, maximum value is 2, when B is playing T, it is 0. So min max is equal to 0. That means maximum is not equal to min max, therefore there is no saddle point. So when a problem does not have a saddle point, what we do? We go for an algebraic method in which we are going to consider the probabilities associated with A playing the head strategy or the first strategy, probability that he plays with the second strategy, that is the tail strategy, P2. So we have P1, P2 we are going to define, that is P1 is the probability with which A plays head strategy, P2 is the probability with which A plays T strategy, such that P1 plus P2 is equal to 1. Similarly, we also have the B playing H strategy and Q strategy. So Q1 is a probability with which B plays H strategy. Q2 is the probability with which B plays T strategy, such that Q1 plus Q2 is equal to 1. So we define these probabilities for this particular problem. So once we define the probabilities, we multiply and get the what are the payoffs. That means when B plays the H strategy, H strategy, what are the payoffs for A? That is 2 into P1 number of times, that is the probability with which A plays H strategy, plus minus 1 into P2. So that's what we are going to write here, 2P1 minus P2, which is nothing but 2P1 minus of P2, we are going to replace by 1 minus P1. So that will be 3P1 minus P1, that let's say it is the first step, first equation. Now similarly, when B plays B2, uh, T strategy, T strategy, it is minus 1 into P1 plus 0 into P2. So that's minus 1 P1 into 0 into P2. That's nothing but minus P1. Now, if you look at these two equations, 1 and 2, they are equal. So 3P1 minus 1 is equal to minus P1 or 4P1 is equal to 1. P1 is equal to 1 by 4. P2 is equal to 3 by 4. And the solution, that's the value of the game, if you substitute in any one of the equation, let's say 2p1 minus p2, you substitute the value, will get minus 1 by 4 as the value of the game. Similarly, we calculate now q1 and q2. So when A is playing the head strategy, that is the first strategy, the payoffs are 2 into q1 plus minus 1 into q2, that is 2q1 minus q2. Similarly, when A is playing the T strategy, the payoffs are minus 1 into Q1 plus 0 into Q2, right? So we are going to now equate these two, equate these two and get 3Q1 minus 1 is equal to minus Q1 or 4Q1 is equal to 1, Q1 is equal to 1 by 4, Q2 is equal to 3 by 4 and if you substitute the value of the game is equal to minus 1 by 4. So this is the way in which we are going to solve the problem when the problem does not have a saddle point and the players are playing the mixed strategies we calculate the solution of the game theory game problems like this
Now we also uh, discuss about or consider what are the dominance rules in game theory. So we have got three dominance rules, row dominance, column dominance and then average dominance. So generally players will play the will play the games which are advantageous to them. So they don't play the other uh, non-advantageous games or the strategies. So that is the underlying principle in which uh, we are going to consider the row dominance and the column dominance and the average dominance. Now let's take a simple problem and try to understand the dominance rules. Now let's take a simple problem in which A plays uh, A plays three strategies. So he has got A1, A2, A3, B plays B1, B2, B3. Now let's see whether this problem has got uh, a saddle point. So we have to find out the, the problem has got a saddle point first and then only go to other uh, procedures. Now the minimum of the first row is 1, 2, 1 and the maximums are 6, 7, 7. So suppose if I take max of the minimum values that is 2, mean of the maximum values is 6. Therefore maximin is not equal to min max. Therefore there is no saddle point. So the first thing we have to determine is that this problem does not have a saddle point. Now we have to convert this 3 by 3 matrix or any matrix an M by N matrix into a 2 by 2 matrix in order to solve the problem you know very easily. So for which we apply the dominance rules. So in the dominance rules we either remove the rows or the columns. The row dominance uh, facilitates us to remove the rows, eliminate the rows and the column dominance uh, facilitates us to remove the columns. Now in this particular problem, suppose if we take uh, the rows A1, A2, A3, we compare now A1 with uh, A2 and also A1 with A3, right? So if you compare now, what are the uh, row that is dominating that we have to check? Now let's say here compare A2 row with A3 row. Now each of the element has to be compared, that means 6 has to be compared with 6, 2 has to be compared with 1 and 7 has to be compared with 6. Now if you look at 6 and 6, 2 and 1, 2 is higher, 6 and 6 equal, 7 and 6, 7 is higher. That means when A plays A2 strategy, he always would like to play A2 strategy, not the A3 strategy because it is giving him more payoffs. So he will not play A3 compared to A2. That means he will play only A2, he will eliminate A3. He will not play, most of the times he will not play A3. Therefore, this A2 gets, uh, you know, uh, removed and we will have A1 and A2. That means we will have two rows. Now we have B1, B2, B3 columns. That means here we are comparing what are the maximum losses that you are going to incur. That means we compare now, let's say B1 with B2 and B1 with the B3. So we compare. Now, if you compare B1 with B3, let us say, now the loss uh, is, or the payoffs is 2 here and 1, that means more loss here, 7 and 6, 7 is more, that means if you are playing B3, the losses are more, that means he doesn't play B3, he will not play B3, so he is going to cancel that particular column, that means to say he will play only A1 row, A2 row, or rather A1 strategy, A2 strategy, and B1 and B2 strategy, he is not going to play A3 strategy and B3 strategy. So that's how using the row dominance and the column dominance, we reduce the matrix into a 2 by 2 matrix, right? So once we get this 2 by 2 matrix, again, we compute uh, P1 and P2 and Q1 and Q2, which are nothing but the probabilities associated with A playing A1 strategy, A playing A2 strategy, P1, P2, B playing uh, B1 with Q1 probability, B playing B2 with the Q2 probability, so we multiply again the probabilities associated. Now let's say uh, this is 1 into P1 plus 6 into P2 must be equal to 7 into P1 plus 2 into P2, right? So we simplify that. We get P1 is equal to 2 by 5 and P2 is equal to 3 by 5. And the value of the game is 4. Now similarly, we calculate uh, uh, the Q2s. So that means the reduced matrix is this. So we get 1 into Q1 plus 7 into Q2 is equal to 6 into Q1 plus 2 into Q2. So that is what we have written here. Now we substitute Q2 is equal to 1 minus of Q1 and then reduce that. So we determine Q1 is equal to half, Q2 is equal to half and the value of the game is equal to 4, right? 
So we write down that in this particular format that means a1 is playing a is playing a1 a2 a3 with probabilities of p1 p2 p3 probability of uh, p, that is p1 is nothing but 2 by 5 p2 is 3 by 5 and p3 is 0 similarly q1 is half q2 is half and the value of the game is 4 and of course q3 is also 0 right so this is how we determine the problems when we do not have the saddle point now we have also another method of solving the game theory problems using the graphical method so here also what we do is we solve by graphical method and try to find out what are the strategies that means uh, we convert into a 2 by 2 matrix that means we will have a playing with two strategies and b playing with uh, two strategies so basically what we do is we are converting this into uh, a 2 by 2 matrix so here we have a 2 by 3 matrix we convert into a 2 by 2 matrix so we delete one of the strategies of b in this particular graphical method so now how do we go about this graphical method now let's understand that now what we do is generally we take a two axis two axis correspond to a1 and a2 here now let's say uh, we are going we are having the payoff that is 3 and 1 so along a1 we take 3 3 mark that and along a2 we take minus 1 mark that so corresponding to the b1 strategy we have got 3 and 1 so 3 and 1 is plotted so we get b1 that is when we play the b1 strategy these are the payoff uh, i mean lines are the equation we are going to have similarly the next uh, line is uh, minus 3 and 1 next points are minus 3 and 1 so we are going to have minus 3 and 1 so we are going to plot this b2 strategy here corresponding that b2 the next uh, line is uh, 4 and 3 so now if you take 4 and 3 4 and minus 3 so we have 4 here and minus 3 here right so we have plotted all the three lines corresponding to b1 b2 and b3 now if you look at now a is playing the strategies a1 and a2 now he is going to take the minimums and out of that he is going to select the maximum so it is maximums he will take and uh, out of the minimums right so amongst the minimum that means we have to take uh, the lower side of this envelope and then consider what are the maximum values now if you take the lower uh, envelope here it is going to be an intersection of here b2 and b3 that means we are going to consider only b2 strategy and b3 strategy and b1 is no way is going to have an effect on this particular solution space so we consider only b2 and b3 so b2 and b3 uh, and uh, mark this particular space so amongst this we find that uh, the maximum will occur somewhere here right so the maximum is going to occur here right so now if you are converting into a 2 by 2 matrix that's b2 and b3 is only be considered so i will have b2 and b3 here what we are going to consider b2 and b3 with a playing with a1 and a2 strategies so again the same procedure we find out the probabilities p1 and p2 with which a plays a1 and a plays a2 similarly q q2 and q3 is the probabilities with which b plays b2 and p3 such that we have p1 plus p2 is equal to 1 q2 plus q3 is equal to 1 so we multiply in the same procedure that's minus 3 into p1 plus 1 into p2 must be equal to 4 into p1 minus 3 into p2 so that is the first equation you will get solve this particular equation you will get p1 is equal to 4 by 1 p2 is equal to 7 by 1 7 by 11 and value of the game is 5 minus 5 by 11 similarly this equation that's minus 3 into q2 plus 4 into q3 must be equal to 1 into q2 minus 3 into q3 so we are going to get this equation solving that equation again we get q2 is equal to 7 by 14 7 by 11 sorry q3 is equal to 4 by 11 and uh, value of the game is equal to minus 5 by 11 so this is how we are going to solve this particular problem so next we have another uh, situation where we have uh, now uh, all the problem previous problem we saw it was a 2 by n matrix now we have got an m by 2 matrix right so we have got uh, there are a is playing different strategies a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 and b is playing only b1 b2 now how do we convert this or how do we do this problem using a graphical method 
Here again, we are going to convert into a 2 by 2 matrix by solving by graphical method. That means we are finding out what are the strategies of A, two strategies of A that must be selected by the graphical method. That means we are going to convert into a 2 by 2 matrix and then proceed with the algebraic method of finding out what are the probabilities, right? So again, here also we take uh, two lines, two lines separated uh, at a unit distance, unit distance. Now let's say we here we are going to have the B1 and uh, so here it will be B1 and here it will be B2 what we are going to mark. So when A is playing A1 it is 1 and 2 so therefore I mark 1 here and then 2 here join that line so that will be the A1 strategy. Similarly the next uh, this one we have got 5 and 4 so it is 5 and 4 I mark 5 and then 4 join that line it will be A2 line. So the next line we will have minus 7 and 9 so we will have minus 7 and 9 so that is the line we are going to draw so in the same way we will have minus 4 and minus 3 so we will have minus 4 and minus 3 next we have 2 and 1 so 2 and 1 so it is 2 and 1 so we write all the equations onto the graph sheet now in this particular problem the issue is now what is the maximum losses that B is going to incur when he is playing B1 and what are the maximum losses he is going to take uh, consider when he is playing B2. Amongst that he has to choose the minimums. That means this space envelope what is going to be we are going to have is an upper envelope. So in the upper envelope uh, if you look at this is the upper envelope that we will have and amongst that minimum. So what is the minimum loss that he is going to incur? when he is playing this strategy. So if you look at that, so the minimum loss is going to occur somewhere here. That means when A is playing A3 strategy and A2 strategy and other strategies are not going to affect uh, the you know payoffs. So we are going to consider only A2 and A3. So when you reduce this to an A2, A3, so we'll have a matrix. So we'll have a matrix in which we'll have A2 and A3, B1, B2. So it normally reduces to a 2 by 2 matrix. So again in the same manner we calculate a, the P1 and P2, P3, P4. Since we have got a P1 is equal to 0 because he is not playing a, a A1 strategy and he is not playing A4 strategy therefore P4 is equal to 0. So that is P1 and P4 is 0. Uh, we compute P2 and P3 with uh, turns out to be 16 by 7, 17 and 1 by 17. And the value of the game turns out to be 73 by 17. Similarly, B is now playing B1 and B2 with the probability of Q1 and Q2. That is 5 by 17 and 12 by 17, right? So this is how we are going to solve the game theory problems. I hope you have understood how to solve a game theory problem when you have got a saddle point and when you don't have a saddle point, you play the mix strategy and then find out what are the probabilities with which he plays the different strategies. And we also learned how to solve the problem using graphical methods. So we plot the graphical method and we reduce that matrix into two by two matrix and use the algebraic method to solve the probabilities. And we determine what will the value of the game and uh, what are the strategies associated with it. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to MSC's channel.